Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for another webinar in our Market Access and International Approvals webinar series. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the Certification and Approvals technical staff here at Vista Compliance Laboratories. Today I'll be presenting to you the Certification and Approval Regulations as well as the technical requirements for electrical equipment, electronics, and wireless product and device approval in South Africa. The Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, or ICASA, regulates the radio frequency spectrum and regulatory standardization in South Africa, as well as the import, distribution, and sale of wireless and telecommunications products on the South African market. All the equipment to be used in connection with the provision of electronic communications, unless explicitly exempted, is subject to type approval in South Africa. All type approved equipment must comply with the SA National Labeling Regulations 2013 and be labeled with the ICASA logo. Radio frequency devices are required to be properly approved by ICASA prior to being marketed or imported into South Africa, and a certificate of type approval is required for radio equipment and other regulated devices to be sold in or imported into South Africa. Vista Laboratories is an EMC and RF compliance test lab and product certification body, and we are experts in global regulatory approvals for radio frequency devices. So, Today we'll be going over the requirements of radio frequency and telecommunications approvals in South Africa. In this webinar, we will provide an overview of the major topics necessary to get your radio devices on the right track for authorization and distribution in South Africa. If you have any questions on the topics presented today, or any other immediate questions regarding compliance testing and product certifications, you can reach us at info at vista-compliance.com. All right, let's begin the presentation. So starting with a brief overview, what is ICASA? ICASA, or the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, regulates radio frequency and the standardization of radio and telecom equipment in South Africa. Any equipment used or to be used with the provision of electronic communication must have an ICASA type approval certificate. ICASA is an independent regulatory authority and oversees radio frequency and telecom type approval in the country. They issue certificates for both radio and telecom approval. Even though there is a South African regulatory body specifically for EMC, ICASA certificates can cover both radio frequency and EMC. ICASA and the EMC regulatory body, SABS, have an agreement in which ICASA can certify for EMC as well. In-country type approval testing is not required for ICASA certification but most of the standards are based on international European standards. All post and telecommunication equipment, including radio modules and host devices capable of radio communication are subject to South African ICASA approval. And it is mandatory for every wireless or telecom device that's produced, assembled, used, or traded within the South African territory to comply with the technical requirements based on the applicable regulations. A certificate of type approval is required for radio equipment and other regulated devices to be sold in or imported into South Africa. The main approval method for type approval is the documentation technical review. Testing in country is not required so most applicants go with this paperwork only process. The two processes for this are the standard and the simplified type approval processes. The type approval certificate will only be issued to South African registered companies, but they do not need to act as the final importer of the product. ICASA relies heavily on EU regulation 
and requests EU documentation to support the type approval application. This could include the EU Declaration of Conformity and test reports. Test reports should be issued by accredited test labs defined in Type Approval Regulation 20131 as an accredited lab in terms of ISO and IEC 17025 requirements. On their website, it states that ICASA certification is supposed to only take 30 days, but really it could take longer at about 10 to 12 weeks. Now, let's briefly take a look at an overview of the standard and the simplified type approval processes. All applicants for type approval are required to register on the ICASA database as a supplier of equipment. Registration will only be afforded to South African registered entities because they are the ones who may obtain the certificate. So for the standard type approval, you must first register on the ICASA database as a supplier of equipment. The applicant will submit the application with all of the relevant documents, which I will go over in a few slides. ICASA will go over the documents and if the product is in compliance with all the regulations, they will issue the certificate. The simplified type approval process is only applicable for products that are identical to already approved products. The supplier must ensure that the equipment applied for is identical to the equipment that is already type approved and appears on the type approval register. You must show proof that the two products are the same. You do not need test reports, but ICASA may require a sample. Every telecommunications equipment traded, made, assembled, imported, or used in South African territory is required to comply with the technical regulations. Here is a non-exhaustive list of regulated products for wireless and telecommunications. This is only a small portion of the products that are regulated by ICASA. It covers all wireless devices and RF technologies, such as Bluetooth, short-range devices, Zigbee, tire pressure sensors, GPS, satellite equipment, and others. All ICASA certificates are valid indefinitely, but type approval for fixed line and cellular equipment is valid for only one year and is renewable in March every year. We just took a look at the products and categories regulated by ICASA. Now we will take a brief look at the EMC and safety regulatory bodies as well. There are three paths we could take here. It does depend on whether or not the product is a radio frequency or telecom product or non-RF and non-telecom. We will never need all three certificates for one device. For radio frequency and telecom products, ICASA covers both radio frequency and EMC certification. ICASA has an understanding with SABS and can certify for EMC along with radio frequency for these types of products. If one of these products also falls under the safety scheme, it will need approval from the NRCS as well. For non-radio frequency and non-telecom products, you may go through SABS or NRCS if applicable. If a product requires ICASA certification, it is usually, if not always, exempt from the SABS process because EMC and low voltage reports, as well as supporting documentation, are provided to ICASA. So, for a wireless device, ICASA is taking the place of SABS, as well as certifying the radio and telecom aspects. When applying for type approval, we should be aware of what technical requirements are applicable and appropriate for the device seeking certification. SABS is the South African Bureau of Standards. 
they carry out EMC approval for non-radio frequency and non-telecom products. SAB's EMC approval is required for all products that don't hold ICASA approval certificates. So, as an example, if you apply for ICASA approval of a radio frequency module, SAB's EMC approval will be required for each host product. The best strategy to make things easier is to apply for ICASA approval for each end product instead of both ICASA and SABS. Manufacturers must get an SANS test report from a SABS authorized lab. These are third party labs that ensure compliance to SABS requirements. A local rep or someone living in country is required and the certificate is valid for three years. After the certificate has expired, renewal is possible. The NRCS is the national regulator for compulsory specifications. They issue letters of authority to show safety compliance for IT equipment. NRCS is required for any device that plugs into the mains. Type approval is mandated by the Electrotechnical Letter of Authority Administration Procedure. CE and CB test reports can be leveraged as part of the approval process to avoid any in-country testing. As with SABS, the applicant must be a local rep or someone living in the country. Certificates are also valid for three years, after which renewal will be required. Family approvals are allowed. Multiple branding is not allowed. So if a product is sold under two different brands, it must have its own certificate for each brand. In the application, the safety report must include sufficient photos, the South African national differences, date of issue and number of pages, test lab and test dates, and the test report. For new applications, the test report must not be older than three years old and for renewal applications, the test report must not be older than five years old. Any product being sold in South Africa must comply with all the applicable regulations. Some products may need a safety certificate along with the type approval certificate, so the product will have to comply with any safety regulations as well. This is just a short list of some of the regulations for RF and EMC and safety. SANS regulations fit the relevant EU and IEC standards. In fact, ICASA heavily follows EU regulations. In-country testing is not required for ICASA certification. In most cases, the CE test reports can be leveraged as part of the approval process. This can avoid any in-country testing. ICASA will accept test reports of the relevant European standards, provided the testing has been performed at a 17025 accredited test facility. Here are the requirements for certification. You will need to submit the test reports confirming compliance with the applicable standards and the technical regulations, photographs of the equipment and installation, user manual, functional description of the equipment, schematic diagram, PCB layout, and proof of payment of the non-refundable type approval fee. ICASA may request the applicant to submit additional supporting documents if they feel it is necessary. Once the documents have been approved, the applicant will need to either pay for the ICASA label to affix onto the product or send in a written request to place their own printed ICASA logo on the product. If choosing to go that route, 
The applicant must submit a copy of the ICASA label they wish to affix onto the product, and ICASA will review it and inform the applicant if that version of the logo is acceptable or not. On the ICASA website, it states the lead time for certification is around 30 days, but in reality, it sometimes takes about 10 to 12 weeks instead. The certificate is valid indefinitely unless there is a significant change that causes the applicant to apply for a whole new certificate for the product to continue to be imported. Type approval for fixed line equipment is valid for a period of one year and is renewable before the end of March every year. The applicant does need to be a South African company but they do not need to be the final importer of the product. Family approvals are permitted, but only a maximum of four devices may be listed on the certificate. If there are more than four devices, you will have to get new certificates for the remaining models. Modular approval is also permitted, but it is not sufficient enough to cover the host product. Separate host devices require individual approval and individual certificates, and multiple branding is not allowed. So if you have one device that is sold under two different brand names, the product must be certified under each brand name. Certification labels are required for every single device marketed in South Africa. After the successful approval of a product by the authority, the applicant is obligated to mark the product with the associated ICASA certification label. The certificate holder must attach the mark on every certified device. For the purpose of monitoring, the label should also be attached on the packaging or container of the equipment. Marking of products with the ICASA logo indicates its compliance with the basic requirements established by ICASA. It indicates the product has been certified and is safe for use by consumers. The label also helps in surveillance and monitoring by the authority in the market. The manufacturer may either purchase the ICASA label for their product from the authority or make a written request to ICASA to print the label themselves or use an e-label. To print the label themselves, the manufacturer must request in writing permission to print the ICASA label according to the prescribed specification. The request must also include a sample of the proposed label. ICASA will decide if the label fits the requirements and is okay to put on the product. For an e-label, the ICASA label must be displayed during the power-up sequence on the system information page or on the help menu of the equipment. The label should contain the following information, the ICASA logo and the ICASA issued certificate number. The ICASA certificate number is TA, standing for type approval, then the certificate year, dash, the number explicitly assigned to the certified product by the authority. The minimum size of the ICASA logo should be 3 millimeters high and 3 millimeters wide, and the issued certificate number must be at least 1 millimeter high. The height to width ratio of the overall ICASA label must be 1 to 2. For example, an acceptable label could be 10 millimeters by 20 millimeters in size. This is an example of the ICASA type approval certificate. On the top center of the certificate is the radio equipment type approval number, which must be shown on the label. This is the part that says TA-year slash certificate number. Information shown on the certificate includes the applicant's name, address, telephone number, and registration number, and the description of the device. The description of the device includes the category and model, and if applicable, the frequency range, ITU emission code, modulation, 
power output, channel spacing, and features. Before any radio equipment is imported or used in South Africa, the equipment must be certified in advance. The certification is intended to protect consumers and guarantee the interoperability and inner working among equipment. Imported equipment will be checked by customs and the market surveillance authorities. If the equipment does not have a certificate or a label, it will not be allowed into the country. Any device that has been significantly changed after obtaining a certificate will not be allowed into the country and will have to obtain a new certificate. Since the type approval certificate is valid indefinitely, as long as there are no major changes to the product, there is no need to get a new certificate. So the product can be imported for as long as you would like, provided the certificate is still valid. South African companies must be the applicant and obtain the certificate, but they do not have to act as the final importer of the product. Surveillance is done by multiple parties after the product has hit the market. ICASA, conformity assessment bodies, manufacturers, and accreditation bodies all put in place market surveillance procedures to audit, monitor, and assess the products and services. Surveillance will be performed at random times by the authority to ensure compliance with the regulations. It will also happen when a valid complaint is filed by the customer. Manufacturers may have to submit a sample for testing or ICASA will perform a visual examination of the equipment, label, packaging, and certificates to ensure everything is in compliance. There could be pe penalties such as fines or imprisonment if someone is found selling equipment that has not been approved by ICASA. The certificate can be revoked if major modifications are made, the equipment fails the conformity assessment, or if the certificate holder violated one of the conditions listed in the certificate. Any change to a device other than cosmetic changes will require recertification. A cosmetic change could be a change in color of the product, external design, or color of enclosure. Any modifications, such as changes to brand or equipment name, model, or function, or changes to the technical specifications of the product require recertification. If the standard under which type approval was obtained changes because of a product change, a new certification must be sought. Changes that are allowed and do not lead to recertification are a transfer of the certificate or changes to any certificate holder details. If there are such changes as this, you must notify ICASA within 14 days of transferring or changing details. In the case of any other changes to the device, modular recertification is not possible. The process for an ICASA certification must be completely restarted. All right, this concludes our webinar on South African market access, certifications, and approvals for electrical equipment and wireless products. I hope this webinar was helpful for you in understanding the process for ICASA approval and certifications, as well as what requirements are applicable to your products. Compliance with the technical requirements of the ICASA is required for all radio and telecom products and ensures telecommunication network interoperability, avoids interference between telecommunication equipment, ensures public safety, and supports national telecommunication industry, innovation, and engineering. All electrical equipment and devices require approval in South Africa prior to distribution or placement on the market. Vista Compliance Labs specializes in certifications, approvals, 
and compliance testing for electrical and radio frequency devices. We are a 17025 accredited EMC and RF compliance test lab and a 17065 accredited product certification body. We are a telecommunications certification body in the US, Canada, EU, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan. And we provide certification and approvals for all product types in countries all over the world. If you would like to stay in touch with regulatory updates, you can follow us online. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions on the information presented today, or any other general inquiries, you can reach us anytime at info at vista-compliance.com. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.